This is 5 in 10 from Skywatch TV. Five topics in about 10 minutes for Wednesday, September 6th, 2023. I'm Derek Gilbert. You find us on YouTube at 5 in 10. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe, share that with your friends, and then guarantee we don't get canceled again by downloading Skywatch TV's free app to your smartphone or tablet. I'll have details on that before the end of this program. Topic number five today, nukes in the UK. Russia's foreign ministry says that the Kremlin will view any move to return U.S. nuclear weapons to the United Kingdom as an escalation and will respond with countermeasures. Their words, their word, I should say, uh, for its own security. Foreign Ministry spokesperson Maria Zakharova was responding to a report last week about an item in the 2024 U.S. Air Force budget for building a dormitory at RAF Lakenheath in Suffolk for personnel on a potential surety mission. Potential surety mission is a euphemism for a, uh, a deployment for nuclear safety and security. This raises the prospect of the return of U.S. nuclear weapons to British soil for the first time in more than 15 years. The U.S. estimated by the Federation of American Scientists to have about 100 B-61 gravity bombs deployed in Europe and other 100 in storage elsewhere. But um, if the U.S. were to redeploy nukes to the U.K. at Lakenheath, it would almost certainly be an upgraded version of the B-61. The FAS estimates that Russia has 1,816 tactical or non-strategic nuclear weapons. Those are shorter range nukes for use on the battlefield rather than for the destruction of entire cities. Uh, but uh, Putin announced in June that even though these have been in storage facilities and to this point announced last month that he would be deploying some of these tactical nuclear warheads to Belarus. No confirmation yet as to whether this has taken place, but uh, tensions are ratcheting upward between NATO and Russia, which is why we bring you this story. Topic number four, oil. Speaking of Russia, Russia and Saudi Arabia on Tuesday announced further oil supply cuts, announcing an agreement to scale back production by another million barrels per day through the end of 2023. That move puts crude output at nine million barrels a day, will be reviewed on a monthly basis, according to the state-owned Saudi press agency. The uh, Saudis began scaling back, scaling back output in July and has extended the production cut twice so far. And of course, as you would expect, oil prices jumped on Tuesday after the announcement. U.S. benchmark West Texas Intermediate climbed more than $87 a barrel during late morning trading on Tuesday. That's the highest level since November of 2022. The cost of a gallon of regular gasoline now about $3.81 in the United States. This is a historically high price for this time of year, Labor Day weekend, but it's still below the $5.01 average last June. Topic number three, get Trump. Democrats essentially doing the legal equivalent of throwing spaghetti at the wall over the last six months or so to see what will stick. Apparently, they're concerned that uh, not enough pasta is sticking to the uh, plaster. So they're trying now a new move, which is uh, invoking the 14th Amendment. They're basically making no secret that their end game is to try to just keep Donald Trump off the ballot in 2024. What are they so afraid of? Um, Rep Representative Adam Schiff, Democratic congressman from California, said Sunday that a legal argument to disqualify Trump from appearing on presidential ballots in 2024 is valid and that the, uh, uh, the, the, the 14th Amendment, which would essentially bar anyone from uh, holding elected office who was engaged in insurrection fits Donald Trump to a T. Schiff said this on MSNBC, told former Biden spokesperson Jen Psaki that the 14th Amendment doesn't even require someone to actually be convicted of insurrection to be barred from holding public office, only that they must have engaged in it. Now, George Washington law professor Jonathan Turley, who I've mentioned on this program a number of times, no conservative, but he is an honest liberal, he says that uh, this new theory is not simply dubious, but dangerous. Quote, the amendment was written to deal with those who engage in an actual rebellion, causing hundreds of thousands of deaths. End quote. This was Turley speaking on Fox News. The 14th Amendment was adopted in the wake of the American Civil War and barred those who engaged in rebellion against the federal government from holding office in the federal government. Now, Democrats are trying to extend this to mean anyone who is just accused of it you know, by that definition, of course, Hillary Clinton, Al Gore, 
anyone who challenged the elections in 2000, 2004, 2016 should be barred from holding public office ever again. But, you know, hypocrisy, <laughs> being liberal means never having to, you know, deal with cognitive dissonance. Anyway, Professor Turley, who served in his, as an expert impeachment witness in favor of Republicans defending President Trump, uh, said that he doesn't favor, that he was, uh, did not approve of the way Trump addressed the crowd on January 6th of 2021. In fact, he's actually argued in his columns that the Democrats had a case to impeach Donald Trump, just not the way they tried to do it. But what he's saying is what they're trying to do now by invoking the 14th Amendment is uh, not just legally shaky, but actually dangerous. Now, of course, for his part, former President Trump denies allegations that he initiated a riot or even called for insurrection at the Capitol, pointing to a portion of his speech on January 6th, where he specifically called on rally attendees to peacefully and patriotically protest. The bottom line again here is Democrats are now showing their cards. Their end game is to try to keep Trump off the ballot because apparently they don't trust American voters to vote the way they want us to vote. Topic number two, state-sponsored death. Story from the UK that we here in the US should pay close attention to because this could happen here. A court in the UK has ruled that a 19-year-old woman, critically ill, with a rare disorder, cannot make her own medical decisions. Her families are battling her doctor's desire to end treatment for her and put her on palliative care, end-of-life care. In other words, let her die as comfortably as possible. The teen, whose name has been anonymized by the court, only referred to as ST, she has a rare genetic mitochondrial disease that is progressively degenerative. She requires regular dialysis because her kidneys have failed. She is currently fighting the hospital in the UK to be allowed to travel to Canada for an experimental treatment. Now, there's no guarantee that the treatment in Canada will work, but the doctors don't want to sign off and give her permission to travel. Her parents, with the help of the Christian Legal Center, sued, advocating for the patient, arguing that um, because she is aware, alert, and able to make her own decisions, she should be allowed to travel to Canada for this treatment. However, a judge in the UK has ruled against her. ST's doctors believe she is actively dying, has no hope of a cure. Hospital told the court that the 19-year-old is incapable of making her decisions because she's under the delusion that her death is not imminent, and the judge has ruled for the doctors, saying that ST is not mentally competent because, quote, she does not believe the information she has been given by her doctors, end quote. Now, I bring you this story for American viewers because this is the kind of thing that could happen here if we turn over all of our health care to a single-payer, government-run system similar to the National Health Service in the UK. When cost-benefit analysis becomes the only criterion or the most important criterion for determining treatment rather than the wishes of the patient, well, this is the kind of thing that happens. Coming up, Canadians, be afraid of travel to the United States, that is. I'll explain why next on 5 and 10. There is an all-out war being waged on the minds of an entire generation of today's young people. State lawmakers are now questioning how 70 foster kids can go missing. They have convinced us in the West that children are a burden. Birth rates are below replacement levels just about everywhere in the Northern Hemisphere. And people would have to be utterly blind or insane not to recognize the current heartbreaking onslaught against our most vulnerable citizens, our children. Children who have been thrown up against walls and locked in closets. Children who hide under their beds in fear and whose nightmares are real. Children who have been beaten with two by fours, whipped with bicycle chains, and burned with cigarette butts. Children living in foster care are four to five times more likely to commit suicide than those who are not. An agenda to submit our current generation of children to a fate far worse than death is being carried out. I was five years old, I was doing dishes. My mom was so mad, she had picked up one of the steak knives and shoved it through my hand and just walked away. 
Who will stand in the gap for these children? These are real lives. Item number one today, Canadians, you have been warned. Travel to the United States could be dangerous. If you're a member of the 2S LGBTQIA plus community, seriously, the government of Canada has issued a travel advisory for people who are two-spirit LGBTQIA plus because of some laws in some states that, according to the Canadian government, might affect the safety of 2S LGBTQIA plus people. The travel advisory uh, issues a cautionary message, says that uh, some states have enacted laws and policies that may affect 2S LGBTQI plus persons. No specific law or policy or even state is named in this advisory. It's You just have to take for granted that somehow, somewhere, if you were a member of the two-spirit, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer questioning, or intersex community, that you might, might be endangered. This uh, was (laughs) reiterated by Deputy Prime Minister Christia Freeland, said the Canadian government employed experts to look carefully around the world and monitor whether there are particular dangers to particular groups of Canadians, end quote. Now, to be fair, the largest LGBTQ advocacy organization in the United States, the Human Rights Campaign, has declared a national state of emergency, citing the proliferation of legislation in state capitals aimed at regulating the lives of queer people. Actually, what's going on here is that a number of states here in the United States have banned the practice of mutilating and sterilizing children who are actually incapable of making their own medical decisions, uh, at least delaying those decisions until they are of age and can make those decisions for themselves. But apparently that is enough for the fear mongers in the human rights campaign and the government of Canada to warn against travel to these United States. You know, the fact is, United States could easily issue and has more justification for issuing a travel advisory to Canada for depressed people, given that depression is now justification for medically assisted suicide in Canada. That actually is a threat to life, unlike the advisory from the Canadian government about travel to the U.S. (laughs) Skywatch TV depends on your support to do what we do. And the main purpose for our existence is to finance the work at Whispering Ponies Ranch. More on that in just a moment. During the month of September, for your gift of any amount, if you're in the U.S. or Canada, yes, even Canada, we'll send you a copy of David Hevner's book, True Power. What power do we have through the Holy Spirit working in us? That's what the book is about. And if you donate during the month of September, any amount, no minimum, from the U.S. or Canada, we'll send you a copy of David's book. Find out more at our website, skywatchtv.com. Look for the red donate button, or you can call us toll-free during regular business hours, 844-750-4985. Now, Whispering Ponies Ranch, what is going on there? We'll get an update this week from Tom Horn, Nita Horn, and the Skywatch investigative team. The camping season for 2023 has ended, so they summarize what has happened there. Some just powerfully inspiring stories of children whose whose lives have been changed, and it's all possible through your support. What's coming in 2024? Find out. This week's uh, broadcast program is uh, available to watch now. You can find our broadcast schedule for the -the over-the-air program at skywatchtv.com slash channels, but that same program is available to stream right now from our website, skywatchtv.com. It's also available at Roku and Apple TV. If you've got the Skywatch TV channel, that is, on your set-top box, you can also check it out at the Skywatch TV channel on YouTube at Skywatch TV Now or our Rumble channel, rumble.com slash Skywatch TV, or better yet, as I said at the top of the program, download our free app to guarantee we are never canceled. We will not be canceled from our own app. All of our video content, including these daily news updates, are available there, as well as a Bible with multiple translations, an audio Bible 
mind you. Calendar of upcoming events, news updates three times a week, and more right in the palm of your hand, whether you're holding an iOS, Android, or Amazon Kindle Fire phone or tablet. And we have links to their app stores to guarantee that you find the app that's right for your device at our website, skywatchtv.com. Thank you for watching as we keep watch. I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is 5 in 10 from Skywatch TV.